Hey, it's Greg here from Bureaucracy again. Time for another awkward beer review. It's been a while. Sorry about that. Um, again, I've got no excuse. These things I do for fun when I get a chance, and I've been having altogether too much fun lately. Um, you might notice a change here. Uh, my fridge, my long beloved fridge, which used to hold all my kegs and my beer and all that, has, has blown up. So, it has gone to the great white wear scrapyard in the sky. And I'm a bit sad about that, but hey, I, it's given me a bit more space back here. The bar's actually, you know, polished up a bit nicer and uh, I can get in and out and without falling over it. It's uh, kind of cool. Anyway, um, what am I talking about today? I have been lucky enough to have been sent a bunch of interesting beers from my good friend Martin Townsend. Um, we did a, a beer together, well I say we did a beer together, his, it's his malt bill and my hot bill, which he then tweaked anyway, so it's pretty much his beer. But I was really honoured to have been a part of it, and it was called Topper's Haddon. Uh, so he sent me a few bottles of that to try, and, and I think he absolutely nailed it. It's a good, uh, hoppy, strong bitter. Um, he calls it a fruit salad in a glass. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was um, on, on right at the cusp of where I'd say it's almost too bitter, but uh, as my friend Joe likes to say, it's not too bitter, you're too soft. And that's pretty much how it is. Um, it's quite quenching. I, if anyone wants to try it and let me know what they think, that'd be cool. Um, or better still, let Martin know. Um, and he'll tell you why, exactly why you're wrong if you don't like it. Um, today, I'm lucky enough to have Ned's Head Flanders Red, as you can see in this lovely clean skin bottle that Martin sent me. Um, I'm quite excited about this. I was going to try it last night, but I ended up having one or two too many beers. Um, so I'm going to try this right now and see how it is. Good. What did he put the bottle on? Uh, the cap on the super glue. Okay, here we go. I've got my favourite glass here, the, the nice Spiegelau whiskey glass, um, which works very, very well for craft beer. I won't pour too much of that because um, Alex wants some and she gets quite grumpy if I don't give it to her. Ah, oh, look at that dirty glass. I could have sworn I'd just washed that. Never mind. This bit's clean. Beautiful glowing orange red colour. Amber, I guess. Um, creamy head. Oh, yes. It's like standing in, a, in the barrel room at Rodenbach. That, that's um, some light vinegar notes. Um, it's almost, yeah, almost an apple vinegar. Um, cherries. Yeah, definitely some sour cherry notes, which are, you know, I'm almost certain he's, he's not used any cherry in it, but it, uh, it's, so it's probably yeast and aging derived, but it is, it's beautiful um, on the nose. The head's lovely, sort of a caramelly, um, dense colour, slightly rocky on top. Good carbonation by the looks of it. Oh, that's excellent. Um, it's round, very rounded. Um, if you've ever had Rodenbach Grand Cru, it's a little like that, but dialed back a, a bit in terms of sour, intensity of the sourness. Um, there's a nice woody note that comes through, um, and that cherry, slightly almondy cherry note uh, is there and is present as well. It's not quite as crisp and refreshing as Rodenbach. Um, it's a little, uh, there's a lot of residual malt there, a lot of body. Um, I wonder if it will um, thin out with age, I'm not sure. Well, I assume like nearly all of Martin's beers that it's bottle conditioned. Yep, certainly looks to be, so I imagine it will change with age, and this is one that it actually might pay to just stick away for a couple of years and see if it dries out a bit. Not that there's anything wrong with it now, it's a um, perfectly lovely beer. Absolutely excellent. So, anyway, what else have I got to tell you? Um, we've been over to Good Beer Week in, uh, in Australia, and that was fun, in Melbourne. Um, Alex and I had a fantastic time over there, caught up with some, you know, people we don't see very often, and 
Uh, hi Kate, it was good to see you again, uh, since you, you treacherously left New Zealand. Uh, but I can't blame you, uh, Melbourne's fantastic and I think I would too. Um, what else did we really enjoy over there? The BMN TV guys, as usual, put on a fantastic Hair of the Dog uh, Beer Geek Breakfast. Um, there was too much beer involved in that, uh, had to go and have a bit of a lie down after that one. Um, Gabs was spectacular, the Australian, Great Australian Beer Spectacular. Uh, just so many great beers. It's good to see Australian craft brewing really taking off. Um, before that I was in the States, had a really good time in San Francisco. Uh, met some very, very cool people. Um, Betsy at Church Key, if you're watching, hi. <laughs> Thanks for looking after me. And I'll see you in uh, probably April next year. Um, yeah, and everyone else that was there was just great to work with. Spent a little bit of time in Las Vegas, but that was mainly for work. Uh, honest, honest. It was, it was for work. <coughs> yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, had a good time there as well. Found some great beer in Las Vegas. It's certainly starting to lift its game. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, that's about it, really. Just thought I'd make it a little bit longer. I normally review more than one beer, so... Um, but because I only had this, I thought I'd better put a little bit more content out there. So anyway, um, here's to you. Looking forward to Beervana. Uh, yeah, I'll see you at Beervana. Cheers.